Well, welcome again. This is Pastor Gary from Faith Mountain Full Gospel Church. We're going to do another Bible study this evening. Uh, if you have enjoyed the Bible studies, I ask that you uh, click on the like tab as well too and also sign up for it so that we know who's coming on and when you're coming on, how often uh, we can watch that and help you out with those kind of things. I'm glad to have you join us for a short Bible studies. I try to keep these about 20 minutes or so uh, so that everybody can get on with their days, but yet still get some teaching in on uh, the Word of God. So uh, this evening I'm going to cover the Roman road, and so I'm going to be looking at the book of Romans, and we're going to be looking at chapters 1, 2, and 3, and I'm just going to highlight those for us as we kind of go through them. So uh, let's start off with a little bit of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come together and to join and study your word, Lord, because your word says that we should be workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, open up all the hearts that hear it this evening and let them have truth and life come out of it in Jesus' name. All right, so this evening, the Roman road, let's look at chapter one first. And this is Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. So you can see here he's declaring what he is. And verse 4, it says, And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. So now he's talking about Christ coming and that he is Lord. And that's real important because if he's not Lord, then he's just like anybody else's leaders in the churches. So it doesn't matter whether you're a, a, in a Islam or you're whether you're a, a Buddhist, it doesn't matter. All of them have a leader. But what sets Christianity apart is that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God and he showed it by the resurrection from the dead. And none of the others have done that. Some talk about it, but they don't have any proof because they still have the bodies here. And the body of Christ was not, not in the tomb, but he was resurrected and he showed himself to all the apostles, plus 500 people at one time. So then you can see here, among whom we are also called of Jesus Christ, to all be at Rome. And that's who he was writing the letter to, those that were in Rome. And he wanted to win the Romans over because that was, of course, the known world is what they call it back then. Now you look at uh, verses 16, and it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, and to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, and is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So that tells us right there, we have to have faith to believe, first off, God is, that he exists, that he sent his son to die for your sins, that he is the son of God, and that also that he raised from the dead. So it takes a lot of faith, actually, to believe in, in Christ. But he gave us all kinds of proof so that we can know it and understand it. So let's take a moment. Let's look at what is faith. So in Hebrews eleven thirteen it tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So faith is a substance, and it is the, for the things that are hoped for. So salvation is something we are hoping for. So we don't have salvation until Jesus redeems us. We accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, and then we have to live by faith to follow him and do what he tells us to do so we can be his. And that's the key to it, is this is not a one-time event. This is something you do for your lifetime all the way through and it takes faith to follow Jesus because he told us to pick up our cross and follow him and that's a that's a tough thing to follow because uh, he 
didn't have sin. He didn't have the sin nature. He was man, but he didn't have the sin nature like the rest of us. So it's a tough act to follow. There's no doubt about it. And that's why it tells us that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And, and there's only been one perfect sinless man to take our place and do those things for us. Going back to Romans. So in 19, verse 19 and 20, it says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And that tells us man does not have an excuse for not believing in God. A lot of people tell you, well, I don't believe that. I believe in aliens. I believe in other things. I believe in the goodness of people. But that's not real factual. And we see here that he tells us that when you look up in the stars and you see the sky, you see the sun and the moon, and you see that the planets orbit and they don't change, that tells you that divine creation is how this is all held together. And in fact, it's still being held together because the word of God is true. And when God made it, he didn't say that's it. It is still expanding. It has not finished because he has not said that's it. That's the end of it. And we know that doesn't take place until the end of the tribulation. And then he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth for all of us as well too. So good news for us. Amen. If you look in Romans chapter 1 verses 26 and 27, For this cause gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of women, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Now this tells you about homosexuality. And unfortunately, it's not the right thing to be in. It is bondage. And the good news is you can be delivered from those things. Your sins can be forgiven. And you can start your new life with being right with God and knowing what and where you need to go in your life. And that's a lot of people struggle with that sin. And that sin is no different than any sin. So don't let people judge you differently. That's not the point. The point is you can be delivered of it. You can be set free of it. Just like any sin, you can be set free of those things. If you don't uh, know how to be set free, I invite you to drop us a note and we'll be glad to get with you and talk to you. Be glad to help you in any way we can to be set free of those kind of things. Because everybody needs to be free. Nobody needs to be in bondage. And that's the key things for us. In verses 28 and on, it says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And that's what happens when people don't repent and they stay in their sin. It will turn into be a reprobate mind. And then that way... People really struggle to be set free of it because they think it's okay and they just keep in doing what they think is right instead of following what God said is right. And I feel sorry for folks, but they can be set free. And like I said, we're always glad to help people. Uh, we're part of a deliverance ministry and, uh, you know, the power of God is to set us free from all those things. It says in verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, hate of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedience to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, do not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That tells you how bad it is. And all of those things there that are listed are sins. And we need to be set free of those kind of things. Lots of people, you know, they go to church, 
but they'll backbite and they'll murder people with their words. And that's not the thing to do. People need to be set free of that. That comes from envy and spite and hatefulness. And that's not a good thing. That's not what God has promoted in, in Christianity. He promotes to love your neighbor and love your enemy. And that's what we need to do. In Romans chapter 2, it says, Therefore thou art an inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemns thyself. For thou that judgest does the same thing. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest this thou, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and does the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Now, this is another one that people like to jump on the bandwagon and go, well, you're not supposed to judge me. Well, the Word of God has already judged all of us. So now it's, we should not judge and we should be not committing the same sins and then judging you and telling you it's wrong, but we do those things. And that's not being set free. That's definitely in bondage. So we need to change that and we want to help people with that. Verse 11 says, for there is no respect to persons it's God. You know, God doesn't care what color you are. He doesn't care where you came from. He doesn't care what kind of money you make. He doesn't care how big a house you live in. Those things are not important. What's important is you and you being able to have eternity and not being suffered for the sins that we have committed. And that's what's nice about Christ. He has paid that price. It says, for as many as have sinned without the law, shall also perish without the law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. And if you remember, Jesus said you can fulfill all the laws, all the commandments in two things, love your neighbor as yourself, and love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. So if we can do those things, folks, we can do those things too. And then that way we can be doers of the law and we are not then condemned by the law, but then now we are justified through it. It says, For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the works of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So, Deep down, everybody knows right and wrong, and they know, hey, if I steal, it's wrong. If I murder, it's wrong. They know these things because it's written in our hearts, and that's why man does not have an excuse. God wrote those laws in our hearts. Romans 2, if we skip on down, it says, talks about circumcision and uncircumcision. Now, the Jews had to circumcise the men, and that was part of the covenant that he made with Abraham was to circumcise the flesh. But look what he tells us here in verses 28 and 29. For he's not a Jew which is outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. He is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. You can't do something to earn God's love. God loves you irregardlessly. And that's why Jesus died while you were still yet a sinner, just like you and me. We were sinners. Jesus died for us already before we were that. And we need to realize that, that when it says Jesus was crucified before the foundations of the world, he really was. He was put to that point and he was ready to go to the cross before man was even made. He, God knew that they had to redeem us because we would fall. Strange that man can't realize that as well, too. In Romans chapter 3, you skip down here. Look at this verse on verse 11. There is none that understand. There is none that seeks after God. They are all gone out the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So somebody tells you they're good enough to make it to heaven. <laughs> That's not true. They're not telling you the truth. They're lying to you. No one is good enough, and only by the blood of Jesus Christ can we be accepted and accessible then to be able to approach God with a pure heart 
and stand in his presence before him without being consumed uh, because God is a consuming fire and sin can't be in his presence. So we need to be sinless. And the only way we can be made that way is through Jesus Christ. If you go down to verses 19 through 22, here you can see it talks about the law says and under the law what happens. But it says in verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there's no difference. So again, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew, you're a Gentile, it doesn't matter what country you come from, what faith you started out as. If you will accept Jesus Christ and believe on him, God makes no difference between you and me. He is not impartial in that way. He does not separate us out by race or color or creeds. He treats us all the same. He loves every one of us, and that's what we all need to know. In Romans 3, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a proportion through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sin that are passed through the forbearance of God. So here we see it again. Jesus is telling us that we are only justified by him. And lastly, in Romans 3, 28 through 31, it says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? No. Is he also of the Gentiles? Yes. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. And like Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. And he fulfilled it by being the pure sacrifice for all of our sins so all of us can be forgiven. I, I want to encourage you to log in and listen to these. You can go to our web page. Uh, you can also go to YouTube and watch us also. You can go to faithmountainfullgospelchurch.com and you can have a link right there. You can also leave us comments on that. If you've got questions or comments, uh, I check that every week so I can get back to you. Make sure you leave me an email account or a place to respond, a phone number, and I'd be glad to get in touch with you and help you out in any way I can because everybody deserves to be saved. Everybody deserves to be free from bondage and nobody needs to suffer like that. Sin was the death penalty that we got because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden. And just because... They did that doesn't mean we can't get free of it. We truly can be. And that's the great thing of being with Jesus Christ is he sets the captives free. Thanks. I hope you enjoy this study. We'll continue on with Romans and we'll continue on in chapter 4, 5, and 6 next week. Thanks for listening.